Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to 10,000 and Below, where we take a look on Board Game Geek, biggest database in the world on board games, and talk about games that are there that are ranked quite low. Today we're starting at 14,101 and going farther. But sometimes there's great games or undiscovered gems in this mix, so here we go. Today we're taking a look, we always take a look at the first one, which in this case is Willy Washbar. And we'll also take a look at this one, Dizios, because it has 100 voters, and so does War Imperial Romano. The first three, let's jump in. Willy Washbar, so this is definitely a kid's game of sorts. Okay, so, um... Raccoons are usually cute and adorable, but sometimes they can be downright nasty. Yeah. 12 discovered fruits and berries. They shove the loot. This looks like a kid's game. A gold seeber style game. Ah, that's kind of cute. I would... I like how this one looks. Nice artwork. Then we have Dizio's board game here. Uh, this is from Mindware Games. Ooh. Is Dizio's what it makes you look like when you look at it? Wah! That is kind of cool how those fit together. It's like a Carcassonne game, but for people who are tripping. It's a create by Mindware. Okay, it makes sense. Domino game. Take turns placing them and earn points according to pieces on the board that your tile touches. I really like how this one looks a lot. It must be very light. That must be why it's like that. All right, War Imperio Romano. The Brazil risk, the Brazilian risk style game is making 35 years. A oh, war is the Brazilian risk like game. So this is the one based on that. Has a lot of plastic pieces. War. Oh, they're on sprues. Ah sprues are tough. For me anyway. To twist things off. I never want to do sprues again in my life. This came out 2007, so there's that. All right, those are the first three. Let's see what else we can find. Los Aprendices. Oh, this one's called Cup of Cup. We got to take a look at a game called Cup of Cup. Drawing Dead. I did not give this one a very good review, but I did give Spinergy. Oh, Spinergy. Wow, Spinergy's pretty low in Cortex. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Los Aprendices. Oh, wait, I've seen this game. This came out in 2015. Even though I think that that, that cover is very much not that interesting of a cover. I've seen this cover before. Ah, I like that scoreboard. That's a nice scoreboard there. But at the end of the day, you're now part of the School of High Alchemy, but you have a long path ahead of you, path that can lead to wisdom. You throw dice to get resources. Meh. Cup of cup. Cup of cup. It's a game of quick thinking and fast hands. Roll the dice, quickly identify the missing colored shape, and swipe the cup off the table. That's what it is. Roll the dice. Are those actually Dixie cups? They must be plastic. Why do the cups have faces on them? <laughs> a speed game. Drawing Dead. Card game where you're a saloon patron. You have to draft rolls and use those. Yes. I really, really gave this one a negative review. When did I review this Drawing Dead? 2018, just a couple years ago. I did not like it. Gold Baby Games. Yeah, I didn't like how it looks either. The, the bad thing about this is I can't even remember the game that much. Huh. On the other hand, Spinergy. 2000. When did I review this one initially? 2014. Well, I reviewed it earlier than that. Um, Spinergy is one of those games that I picked up at a thrift, not a thrift store, at a Barnes and Noble's clearance sale. And I was like, ah, let's see. And I really liked it. So it's really too big. It comes with this giant thing here with these three rings on it. And you're kind of spinning them and getting these different words and you're writing stories with these words or following some sort of you're writing something there, and you got to use these words in there, and then people are trying to figure out which words were the words you had to use in the story. 
That's basically it. But I liked it a lot. It's a fun game. And even though this device is ridiculously huge, it's fun. And then they also have different kinds of rings you can put on it. There was uh, chocolate rings. Uh, there was uh, sports, I think. Uh, it, was a, it was an interesting game. It's better than you might think. I can see why it's ranked so low on here, but meh. Cortex, this one from 2012. You put a tile next to ones already in play. Oh, yeah. You just got to have the right tiles at the right time. Boring. All right, let's continue on here. We have Terra Shifter. Animal Bot Animal, Animal Memory Stacking. Geek Battle, the Game of Extreme Geekdom. This one has 150 ratings. Harry Potter, A Year at Hogwarts. I don't know if I've seen that one. We should look at that one briefly. And The Rolling Gang Game. Another game that... Okay, well, let's get to that one. Later. Terra Shifter. So this one, the rules are fairly confusing. It is sort of a cooperative game in which you're shifting and moving um, terrain around. It looks kind of cool trying to get these right things in the right combos. But it's a solo game that they kind of expand it for multiple players. That's how I feel about it. Um, animal upon animal memory stacking. This is an animal upon animal where you stack stuff, but here you got to remember which animals are stacked upon which. Um, I like animal upon animal anyway. This one worked really well for kids. Uh, really great game. It's different than the animal upon animal series. It has that same kind of concept, except it's not so much about dexterity, about dexterity and memory. And I found this to be really fun for kids. Geek battle. Whatever, a trivia game for geeks. Plenty of those. All right, let me see if I can answer these questions. In Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, the Death Star is first tested on what planet? Alderaan. What comic strip satirizes African American culture through the eyes of ten-year-old black radical Huey Freeman? Boondocks, I think. How would the number five be represented in a binary system? Uh, one zero one. Right. Yeah, one zero one. Alfred Fielding and Mars Chavanez were trying to invent plastic wallpaper when another use for their product popped up. What did they invent? Oh, I wouldn't know. I'd just be guessing something. Bubble wrap, mylar balloon, shrink wrap, and Velcro. I'll go with Velcro. That sounds right, but who knows? And we're now about to find that out. So, Alfred Fielding and Mark... What did they do? Bubble wrap. Oh, I was wrong. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Harry Potter, this is from Toppy Games. Um, you have to have the most... Ugh, not looking good at all, this one. Oh, Quidditch, they just threw everything in one box. This might be good, but I doubt it. Now, this game, Die Color Bond, or The Rolling Gang, this one is fantastic. If you get this one, you should get it. And it's, this is from Haba. And Haba makes great kids games. But this is a good game for adults, too. This is the kind of game you want to play at a con. See that box there? Let me see if there's a closer uh, picture of it. Eh, maybe this is the best one. I don't know, this one with the kid holding it. There's the, um, all those things are magnets, and you have this ball, and someone else will turn it over and say, pig, and then you have to roll the ball around in the box and make it go through the pig's leg. Then they'll turn it over and go, donkey, and you got to do that one, and it's hilarious. It is, it's a kid's game, but it's a game that is so much fun to play. I really like this one, so if you ever get a chance to get it, you should. All right, let's continue on. As we go through here, not a lot of interesting ones here. The I like this, Bone Wars, the game of ruthless paleontology. That's entertaining title. We'll take a look at that one. Roadkill Rivals. We'll have to look at that one, too. This one has 155 ratings. Schweinbammel. And then Shadow Era. Oh. <clears throat> All right. We'll be back. We'll talk about these. All right. So, Bone Wars. <laughs> Give me that scout, guys. He was also, in his politically and scientific rivalries, peculiarly mean, intemperate, and vindictive. Oh, this is actually, are these real people? Are they mean? Is this a take that game? Oh, I... You can play fossil cards, you can add points or steal points by adding to or mending their skeletons. Nah, alright. 
Zygote Games. What else have they done? Only two games. Parasites Unleashed. Meh. Roadkill Rivals. You are trying to... Another one. You're trying to get Roadkill. There's randomness. Yeah, it looks like another take that game of sorts. Can kill one weaker animal. So the animals are killing each other. And then you're eating them. I guess. I have this game somewhere. I know I've seen that cover. I love these pigs. So, although, to be fair, I might not because I, this artwork has been done before. Artist Rolf Vacht uh, has done a lot of these games. You'll notice the cockroach poker and the things like that. So this, but I, I really feel like I have this one sitting on my my house at home for the kids. Came out in 2008, so I don't know why, but man, I do like that artwork. Those are the cutest pigs you've ever seen. Even that farmer looks. Oh, those are not cute pigs. Oh, we're back to cute pigs. More cute pigs. Okay, we're getting off topic here. Shadow Era. I gave this a one. I don't give many games a one. This, though, I remember this one. Because when I did give this a one, the fans of this game came after me dramatically. But I would like to point out that it's ranked 14,274. Um, this is a game that's very similar to Hearthstone. At the time I reviewed it, I didn't know Hearthstone. Um, and I know that that's based on another game. Um, this was based on that style, but they tried to make it a board game, uh, a physical game, with the rules written on the other side of the board, which was a bad start, and bad artwork, and boring theme, and I just hate it every second of playing this game. <laughs> Whew. But if you ever want to have fun, go search in their forum somewhere for the comments on my review. If I ever feel too good about myself, I can go read those comments to keep myself humble. All right, what do we got here? Awesome Kingdom, the Tower of Hate Skull. Why would you name your tower Hate Skull? E Hexagony. Eh? Uh, sushi Draft. I feel like I played Sushi Draft. Uh, and Troll Hunt. The Game of Internet Warriors. No, it's not really. Uh, Black Monday and Lia Wadi. All right, here we go. Awesome Kingdom. The Tower of Hate Skull. That cover looks... <laughs> oh, it's from Kevin Wilson. All right. And brought to you by Kevin Wilson and Steroids. Did I not play this game? I feel, I feel like I have. I don't see a review from me there. Maybe I played a game that was similar to it. Retreat to Darkmoor? Does this work with another game? You enter a dungeon. You have a special ability. We make a circle of dungeon wall tiles. And you play an action card, moving your hero around and claiming the card on which you land. I know I played a game like this if it wasn't this one. I remember this. Moving around and landing on a different cards. Huh. Interesting. I don't remember playing a game called Tower of Hate Skull because I'd remember that. Retreat to Darkmoor? No, that's not the same thing. I don't know. Maybe I did play this and I just never reviewed it. Where did I play this? Huh. Well, cool. Hexagony from 1977. <gasps> Wait a minute. This is re-implemented by Binfa, the Tau of War. Now, this one has a ranking of 14,328, so we're going to get to this one soon. So we'll wait till then to talk about it. But I do want to talk about it, so hold on. Sushi Draft, a fast little card game where you're drafting sushi, um, grabbing tiles and things. So I have not played this one. It's tough to make a game called Sushi Draft. Uh, blue, orange. I, I get what you're trying to do here, but... Making a game called Sushi Draft in a world where Sushi Go exists is a hard thing, especially when Sushi Go is a drafting game. Um, and you can see which one won that contest. All right, Troll Hunt. <sighs> yeah, this is a game I wanted to like, 
doesn't look that good, but you're putting these lights on here and you're trying to hunt down trolls as they move through this bars. It just looks, it's so boring. You're moving them around with the lights and there's luck and the board doesn't look good. Just not a good combo. Black Monday from 1988 from Sid Saxon. This might be one of the last games he designed. Commercial edition of his game Card Stock Market. Based in a stock market crash of 1987. That I don't remember. I was too busy being a kid. Whew. Nah, it looks fine. It looks like your typical stock market game. We're probably going to run across a lot of stock market games in this 10,000 and below series. Lee Lawadi, I remember now this one is the butterfly games because I remember it's all about that Lee Wadi, and it has really pretty butterflies. See those butterflies there? Who is the publisher of this? This is uh, Quali. Quali makes some good things here. You have these things and you're removing flowers and putting them in a the garden, attracting butterflies. But it was just an okay abstract strategy game. I remember this one. Like, eh. Quali has some nice stuff. This was not one of their top games for me. Alrighty, continue moving on here. We have Rescue from the Hive, Rat Race, and Down Under. All those have quite a few rankings. And then Bow Squeak Meow. We'll take a look at that one. And we'll take a look at Toss Up. Since it has 265 ratings. Alright, here we go. Rescue from the Hive. This looks like a war game of sorts. With counters and defeat it. Very sci-fi-ish type game. When did this come out? 1981. And it's from Ares Magazine. Space Marines attempting to rescue a human ambassador and family. I like that idea. Yeah, very old school looking for sure, though. All right, Rat Race, 1967. I feel like I've seen this one at a thrift store before. That's Waddington's Rat Race. This one's called Status. That's Spanish version of it. Yeah, it looks like your typical roll and move game. Here would be the one I might have seen. Yeah, I feel very much like I've seen this one before. Down Under 2007 from Bamba Spielvlag. A tile placement game where you're placing tiles to increase their root. Why is it called Down Under? I don't hate how that board looks. Looks like you're trying to get different Australian animals there. Who's the publisher of this? Bamba Spielvlag. Okay. Okay. Bow Squint Meow. This is from Postscriptum. The artist is Angelo Parazzi, uh, who's done War Angel. His art, to me, is always very distinctive. I thought this one was okay. There's a mad scientist, and you're chasing things around, but it's possible that for one of the creatures to turn into another creature. Component quality is okay. Uh, I actually reviewed this game in 2011, almost 10 years ago. Probably would not be as keen on it now. And I wasn't keen on it then. Toss up. Once you start rolling greens, you think those reds will never appear. This seems like a can't stop. It was released as can't stop for a little while. But it's not can't stop. It has some nice dice that are red, green, and yellow. This is not for people who are colorblind at all. A simple little patch game. Alrighty, let's see what else we got here. Star Wars Escape from the Death Star. That's pretty low rating for a game that a lot of people probably remember fondly. Here's another Adventure Time game. Uh, Glenn's Gallery. That one I did not give a very good rating to. 4.5. And let's see. Any other games here we want to pull out of this? Hero Brigade. Baba Yaga. Oh, I got to do this one. Ketchup and Mousterd. Fast Food Battle. I'm rolling my eyes at that name. Lifestyle. And then we'll end with the last game. We always take a look at the last game no matter what it is. Vigo. All right. Star Wars Escape from the Death Star. came out in 1990. I definitely heard of this one from West End Games. I never played this one. Um, 
almost has a look of a role-playing game, different sectors, trying to get there. So much involved in this game. So my question then is, because of this and because of the nostalgia and everyone like, I wonder why it's ranked so low. So let's take a look at the comments and see what they say. It's a similar cooperative concept as Lord of the Rings, but with die rolls and bookkeeping. Well, that's not bad. Solo play is best as that one person. Old style cooperative game. Interesting. Abstract and boring. Lack of immersion. A co-op game you all win or lose together. Seems like Star Wars themed games let me down, says this person. Oh, sorry, there's some good ones. He said this in 2014, no. There are better games to play with children. Played this solo. Cool stuff. Lots of 80 Chromies rules, but the movement game make it unbearable. Oh, righty. Well. So this came out in 1990. There was almost no cooperative games at that point in time. Interesting. All right, Glenn's Gallery. This came out in 2010 from Reiner Knizia from Mayfair Games. Really bad components. Mayfair Games made a lot of bad component games in this one. <sighs> well, the, the art's not awful. I would have to go back in time and watch my review to remember why I didn't like it, though. It's been a decade, so... Hero Brigade. Oh, superheroes. Yeah, so there's a lot of superhero games. This is one of those ones that is an interesting idea, and I fear that at this point in time, and this one you have these cards in the front and the cards in the back and attacking them. I wonder now, now this came out in 2014, I wonder if it might go down a little bit because there's so many good superhero games. When this came out, there wasn't quite as many, um, but... It's a fast-paced game, so does that. You put cards in your front row, support row, or use them as a one-time card effect. I like that concept. Baba Yaga. This one I gave a 5 to. And there's different cards in the deck that do different... Um, Summon Enchanted Owl. This one came out just a few years ago. I distinctly remember playing it because I remember those cards, but I don't remember how it plays. I just remember you're trying to draw cards and not have bad ones come up. Catch up and mouse start. All right, but I do like the uh, it's catch up and mouse start, and then there's fast food battle. I like the the art actually. I really like the art, although how can I eat anything when it all has cute little smiles on it? <laughs> Alrighty, lifestyle. This is from Amigo. So lifestyle is an interesting game. I don't dislike it. You're trying to get this glorious lifestyle in front of you. And you have these cards. You need to roll dice to get them. And you need to roll specific things. And once you give dice, they give you bonuses to future rolls and things like that. But at the end of the day, if you don't roll well, it don't matter. And there's ways to offset it and everything. And I like the artwork. I like the theming. But it is pretty lucky. So it's okay. It's just not fantastic. That's why I gave it a 6. And Vigo, this is the last one here today. Sailing in the Bay of Treasure. Players move their ships over tiles, collecting ones which construct treasure chests or used as events. All right. This does not look that great. It looks old. When did this come out? 1994. Okay. Designers Edith Grindbotcher. I wonder what else she's done. Pathfinder. Eureka. I played Eureka. Let's quick look. at. We talked about Eureka. I did not really care for Eureka myself, unfortunately. Finding gold. I was very, very lucky, but I like the theme of it. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. That's another 100 games that I've been taking a look at, folks. Are there ones I should have talked about? The ones you want to talk about? Mention in the comments below. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching 10,000 and Below on the Dice Tower.